oh gosh, I think settling down after a period of change, much of which we haven't yet encountered. But I think we're at the start of a very long period of change and reduction and oh, sorting out a whole range of things that says, what are we doing for the industry? And uh, I think there'll be a period of consolidation about that. And then we will have a complete route to branch review about uh, actually what HR would then be about. Now, I'm, I'm a believer that the technology will help, it will develop, it will, it will help us to scope what is possible. Do I think it will ever replace a function of HR? No. I have a fairly specific view about business partner. The business partner is what I would call in other life the account manager or the relationship manager. I think there's a very clear delineation line between shared services and business partner. The transaction versus the transformation, the business partner has got to realise what the opportunities that arise out of transacting uh, provide and facilitate in terms of doing the business differently, i.e. the transforming. So I think, I, think, I think that line is fairly clear, but in terms of how different organisations view the role of business partner, I'm not sure that that is as mature as it necessarily needs to be. I've, I've just done a review of an organisation in my, in my new world where the role of business partner is, is, is a very confused one, where it really is an old HR manager in all but name, but it has this modern title of business partner. That's not a business partner. Um, not particularly. Um, I think at a time of when the purpose of HR has been under the cosh, um, I think the CIPD has worked actually pretty hard to try and keep a reputation of HR as to what it's about, what its um, scope is, what its role is. I think it's tried pretty hard uh, to keep that um, discipline in mind. And I have to say I pay personal tribute to Jackie Orton and her team for the way that they have done that. But at the same time, HR has been slow <laughs> to react to what the new world demands. We are here to provide a function. Most of that function is about making sure that the manager actually is managing and that we are getting the best out of our people. Oh, because it is still a discipline um, that people are attracted into because it is going to the heart of an organisation and it is looking at how it works, that, that business and what it might need to do. And people are attracted into that because they see it as a real enabler to make sure that the business can run more productively. So I think, you know, if, if I look around the, the business now and I look at some of the talent of, of, of some HR director colleagues, you know, they are simply top class people. There's a few of the other sort too. Um, I'm not sure even that there's enough of those top class people who are coming through. Principally about working with your senior manager colleagues not trying to regard the function as being independent of, but being part of. And the thing that I have learned, sometimes at my cost, my business, is that one has to work with one's colleagues to make sure that the solutions are relevant, that you actually are pump priming many of those solutions, that you are planting them, the ideas in managers' heads, and working through other people. Um, and therefore your, your bottom line cost can be justified in terms of what success there is in the business, rather than the sort of outputs by which HR tends to get measured, how we've reduced this or how we've increased that. And they're, they're, they're just a little bit too vague for me. My, my, my testing experience has been making sure that you've worked with colleagues, that you've got them on side, that they are supporting and valuing the work that you and that, that, that me and my colleagues are actually doing. And it's taken a little while in my time to actually get to the realisation that that is so important to succeed in HR. Um, I'll answer that on two levels really. The first level, which is just a pure, you know, I've been corporate director of, of, four, of HR for four separate organisations. Uh, I've done something right occasionally, uh, and I look back and I'm a fairly directive, fairly spicy sort of character. I like things to be done in a certain way and therefore I've got become very corporate in that style. So that in adjusting into my consultants world of going into organisations looking at 
what might need to be fine-tuned, what might need to be changed. The tendency to want to get in there, roll my sleeves up, get on with it, give a few orders, give a few directives about how we're going to do this and, and, and how we're going to get other people on side, I've had to curb simply because I've learned that the consultant's world is about options. One has an adjustment to make in terms of getting out of the trappings of corporate life. You have an awful lot of things around you that protect you, that, that, that you can rely upon. Uh, it's not just as simple as keeping one's diary now uh, and, and the sort of domestic part of it, but it's about the expertises, the other things that you become so, um, I think, complacent about that that expertise is around and it will be there to service you. Whereas now, actually, I have to go off and acquire that. I'm hugely enjoying the business of going around and talking to different organisations. It's a bit twee to say it's very varied, but it's very varied. And I quite enjoy the challenge of that and learning at what makes an organisation tick. And I enjoy very much the sense of working with a different board and a different management team, a different array of individuals um, around a very specific project. I am very acquainted now with the world of that is my problem. I'm not concerned with the side issues of the politics, big and small p. I'm not concerned with how somebody reacts to something that is said on a specific time. I'm not concerned with whether the mood is contrary to where uh, where I am at, I am only interested in delivering the brief that I have been commissioned to deliver. And if there is some sort of counter view being um, generated somewhere else about what I'm producing or even what's going on in the organisation, it matters not to me because my job is to respond to the brief. So that single focus really is quite, uh, is quite freeing up of an awful lot of brain space. I think it would probably be about what do you think will come next in terms of HR and are we equipped to actually cope with it when it comes? What are we thinking for the next big change and are we prepared for that or are we ill prepared for it because we just simply haven't got ready for it and are we trained for it? By making sure that one is always looking at one's people, one is, one's HR people, one is looking at what the requirements are, what the requirements of the business are, and matching the two and looking at skill gaps between them.